everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I am Tash McZombie. I am aware I have makeup on my shirt because wear white, get makeup all over yourself. Of course, that's gonna happen. Anyway, and welcome back. It feels like so long since I've sat down and filmed. I have not been well like these past few weeks, like two to three weeks, I have just been floored with a bug and sickness and other stuff that's going on and today I put on nice clothes and then got them stained and put makeup on. I haven't worn makeup in like two weeks and I'm pretty happy with this but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're not here to talk about my makeup or my stained t-shirt. Where I'm here to do a book review. Whoop, whoop. So I don't know what that was. I'm fully aware that I started my book club series did it like twice kind of gave up because uni kind of got in the way and just life in general and i know i said on twitter if you follow me on twitter that i was gonna do an indie comics book review like a monthly review for indie comics and i will start that i'm kind of i'm kind of nervous to do that one and not that you know Yes, I give honest opinions and reviews and I'm not going to go slate someone's work but because obviously I'm just starting my career in writing comics it's kind of scary to be like well what if even if it's a good review the person doesn't agree with what I said like or I didn't get the point and I know that's so silly but then um, I don't know also Comment below how you want me to do it because either I can do it like I did my book club series before which I'll link in the cards or down below um, where I filmed a video at the start of the month telling you what book or comic it was I was going to read and then I filmed a video at the end of the month doing a review on that book. So if that's something you want to do, if you want to read along with me then comment below or give this video a thumbs up so I can do two separate videos one being very short introducing the book saying what it's about the author telling you where you can get it and then the second video which would probably go up at the end of the month just to give people time to buy and read the book I would then share my opinions and hopefully you could comment with yours in return or I can do it like this where I just read it and do a review so let me know which you would prefer because I'm happy to do either. So anyway, if you haven't guessed by the title, I'm going to give you my review on Lynn Anderson's brand new book, The Sins, Sins of the Dead. So this is her newest book in the Rona McLeod. I always want to say McLeod for some reason. Series, sorry, I know. My dust jacket keeps like riding up. And I'm like, no, this always happens to me with hardbacks. Like, the dust jacket never stays in place, which is a crime in itself. Sorry, I'm just going to... I should have been more prepared. This is going to bug me. Anyway, so if you don't know who Lynn Anderson is, Lynn Anderson is a Scottish crime writer. And she has a series... She has a couple. She has this series and then another series of books that I haven't actually read yet. And this series follows Rona McLeod, who, McLeod, McLeod, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, who is a forensic scientist who works for the Glasgow Police. So all of her books, these, this series are set in Scotland. So most of them are primarily set in Glasgow. Some are set in Edinburgh. She has some set up in Orkney. So they kind of go all over Scotland. And I love that because I'm Scottish. I know the places she's talking about mostly if I've been there and it's just a lot of fun and yeah um if you haven't read any of her books I highly highly recommend them I mean I'm going to go into this being honest she is one of my favorite authors I have met her a couple of times now and she is lovely she has been very supportive of me and my starting of my writing career like she follows me on twitter she retweets she sends me advice she is a lovely person and yeah so but that's i'm not going to be biased on that because i'm still going to be honest about the book so first off i'll read kind of like the blurb and then tell you what i thought 
So while illegally street racing in the underground tunnels of Glasgow, four Harley Davidson riders make a horrifying discovery. A dead man left in the darkness. Hands together on his chest as if peacefully laid to rest. The cause of death is unclear, the only clues being a half glass of red wine and a partially eaten chunk of bread by his side that echo the ancient religious practice of sin eating. Called to the scene, forensic scientist Rona McLeod is perplexed by the lack of evidence. But when another body is found near her own flat, laid out in a similar manner, she fears a forensically aware killer stalks the city and is marking the victims with their unique signature. Even more worryingly, the killer appears to be using skills they may have learned while attending her forensic science lectures at Glasgow University. There are signs that Rona is being targeted and that the killer is playing with her and the police, drawing them into a deadly race against time before a sin eater's next victim is chosen. So that's the blurb of the book. So the book follows if... I will say this, so because these are a series following set characters in the police force. Um, now, when I first started reading her books, the first book I read was Picture Her Dead, which is the... Which is the sixth one in the series. So yeah, there was little things I was like, well, I was a bit confused. But it didn't really bother me. So even if you haven't read all the other books before this one, you wouldn't be too lost, which is something that she did address actually at a talk, um, that she wants her books to be, they're still standalone novels, but you can read them as a series and follow the characters develop and their stories. And even things that are mentioned that happen in other books, like certain characters or cases, are kind of like, they get covered in a way that you're not rereading the previous book, but they're kind of like, explained enough that if you hadn't read it you get the gist of what happened and honestly it makes you want to go back and read the others because that's what I did I went back to the beginning read them all and then bought them periodically since then sorry my lighting is a mess um so yes um so just to warn you if you do pick this up yes there'll be characters yes there'll be slight plot storylines mention that you may be a bit like what are they talking about that's nothing to do with this one that's the only thing but then again I personally when I started it it didn't really bother me that much it just made me want to go and read them all again from the beginning so yeah they do st but the thing is they do stand alone on their own the stories are so strong on their own now this one I do love. I have some that I love more than others. As I said, they do, they are standalone. Like the one that came out before this, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't, it wasn't my favorite in the series. Whereas this one, I feel really captivated me from the get go. I just couldn't put it down. And honestly, I was really sad when I finished it. And that to me is a good sign of a good book is that when you finish it, you don't know what to do with yourself. So, what I enjoyed about it was, and this is something she does a lot in the books, she really puts a lot of effort and studying into like a theme of her book. And this one was obviously the Harley Davidson kind of biking culture, which my family, like my father-in-law and his fiancée, they are bikers. They go to Storm in the Castle every year. They go to every biking event. They went biking around America. And so for me personally, that was nice because I have family members who attend these events who are so passionate about bikes and I love more bikes. I love Harley Davidson's. I don't ride one. I wish I could. I don't. But for me, that was a nice touch. And the fact that you know, like if you follow on Twitter, she really, really put a lot of work into learning about that culture. So I thought that was really cool. I thought it was quite interesting that and it's so refreshing to read about like badass female bikers it wasn't just your typical burly bearded men bikers it was these four badass women just having fun and accidentally discover a dead body um i'm trying to explain this book without giving spoilers because obviously i didn't tell people to read it before so 
I love that factor of it. I think the story itself was really clever. The fact that Rona is targeted by this killer is creepy. I thought it was so creepy and there was so many times reading the book and this is where dramatic irony comes into play because as the reader you know you're like don't drink the wine, don't eat the bread, don't eat that food, close that damn window, your cat was deliberately poisoned and you're screaming at the character to be like don't do this stuff, like she gets poisoned and like so I'll say one part that happens she opens her door and a bottle of wine has been left on her doorstep and she thinks it's from her kind of he's her partner but not her partner like Rona has a very complicated love life which again is something I like that Lynn Anderson has wrote this character not to have a conventional love life that she's not this woman who just falls in love with someone and pines after them and then is dumped and is hurt and blah 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 she's not some crazy woman like she is out there living her damn life like she likes a guy and she'll sleep with him and she's not sorry about it and i love that because we need more of that i feel about female characters that we we need more female characters who are proud of like their sex life and their sexuality and embrace it in a way that isn't like taboo and I feel like she writes that perfectly of Rona and yes there's times reading it you're frustrated because you want her to end up with a certain character and just be happy like there's a character Magnus I love him and I would love for her to be with him and I know that's not gonna happen but like like there is times where my little romantic heart will be like set up with that nice man but then there's also times where I'm like well no she is in a crazy high-powered job that she is married to her job just people in these kind of careers are and it is refreshing and I think at first when I first read these I think it took me by surprise because I wasn't used to reading characters like that I mean that was my life before I met Grant and got married I'm you know that's most women most people most young people's lives but we never read about it in a way that isn't shamed and I love that that's how she's written it and I've totally sidetracked here my father I was important to say um so yeah this bottle of wine she thinks Sean her living not living partner left it for her except she doesn't like red wine but she drinks it anyway and she is really really sick but then, because we know that red wine was found at the body, at the crime scene, as the reader, you're like, bitch, don't drink it. Don't. No, 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 no. And then it happens again. Um, she gets poisoned again, and she ends up in trouble. I, I really don't want to give away too many plot points here, because there, there is a lot. But then I like that, because it keeps you engaged. Um... So yeah, like I really liked that there was a huge sense of dramatic irony in this book because it made it more fun to read along when you're literally screaming at this character not to be so stupid and you're just like, oh my god, god damn it, don't think, <laughs> you know, and I loved that because I feel like I've not really had that with this character before. I've had it with McNabb who is the main detective in these novels who Rona works along with and he's always getting himself into trouble. Like, his girlfriend's one of the bikers who finds the body. And I think McNabb's hilarious. I, I just think he's really funny. And I think he's such a great character. But you're so used to him being in peril and making mistakes. That it was really interesting to actually see Rona be the target. And her being vulnerable. And her making mistakes. And I think it was a really, really interesting character development for Rona. And then there's another point in the book where, okay, I'm just going to say it because if you're watching this video, you've either already read the book or you want to know what happens. Otherwise, you wouldn't watch it. So she discovers she is pregnant. Now, in an earlier series of books, Rona had a son who she gave up for adoption and who she's reunited with later on and when she finds out she's pregnant this time she's totally you know she's gonna have an abortion she doesn't want to have a baby 
you know, and that is fine. But then she begins to change her mind and after she is drugged and kidnapped and is left alone with her thoughts and feelings, she discovers that she wants, if she can get out of this alive, she wants to keep the baby. And to me, that was such a turning point for her character because we already know she has a son out there who she's in touch with now and then. You know, she's been more involved with him in cases and stuff. You know, but they don't have like a mother-son relationship. And as I said, she's so fiercely independent and, you know, that for her to suddenly decide, you know what, I want to keep this baby was such a huge emotional turning point like I honestly felt like I mean I'm a mother so yeah I I have a slight bias on my own personal feelings I have nothing against abortion before anyone mistreats that just being a parent you have that kind of emotional like understanding of being in that situation and t she ends up losing the baby obviously she hasn't eaten she's been under trauma and again she kind of reverts back to being the closed off Rona that we know and love instead of telling Sean you know how she felt it's well she doesn't and just accepts it's over and again it's frustrating because you what you just want good things to happen for her you want her to be happy but then I think it would have been too much of a leap from her character to have done that honestly I mean that's just a personal thing is oh, oh, sorry this white t-shirt was a bad idea stupid sunshine nope just making things there we go there we go <laughs> um you know so I do think character wise I feel like Rona's a character who didn't really she's already such a strong character but she still in each book manages to develop manages to become we learn more about her in each book and that's something I really enjoy because you know you can read a series of books with the same character and they never change or it's something slightly change but not enough that you're like wow this character really learned from this experience and moved on and has become someone not new but something inside them has changed so I love that this book really does that with Rona it really really pushes her to her limit and I like that um, what I, another thing I liked was I had a list of so many different characters who could have been the killer and none of them were in fact there are bits that are from the character's point of the killer's point of view it's written in the third person usually yeah it's in the third person although I think the killer bits are written in the first person I could be wrong and they're creepy I love when writers write from the point of view of the killer I love it because it's just creepy and it kind of takes you off guard it makes you feel a bit on edge and then after a while you do click you I won't say who the killer is I won't give that away but there was many many characters and it's funny because the characters in the book go through the characters thinking well could it be him could it be her oh well this person that person you know and you kind of go along with the characters being like, well, yeah, I thought it was that person too. Now, this is my only critique on the story is I wanted a bit more closure with the killer. Now, whether that's going to happen in the next book, I don't know. But we ne and I understand why this was done. But we never like the killer. We never find out why. Like, why they do it? Why Rona? Why the Sin Eater? You know, there's kind of clues dropped in as to why. And we know because they go to her forensic class, they've learned this information, they've become obsessed with her as their teacher. You know, they dropped clues in certain things, but then people just ignored it because they were like, it's too obvious. And how their paths intertwined through other people and how they used people to get to her is I found this killer to be fascinating. I found this killer to be really, really interesting and terrifying. But there's just, 
And I think it was, I think, I mean, I'm not the writer. I'm not, I don't know. This is just me spitballing. It was done in a way that I think was done on purpose to be like, it's frustrating because the killer doesn't give anything away in the end. And I think that was probably on purpose. And maybe that's going to be covered in the next book. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm just guessing. And that to me was my only gripe about it was I wanted to know more and I guess that's just me like well maybe not just me but like I am fascinated with serial killers and I love knowing how their minds work and what goes through their head and killers and that's why I love crime and horror you know but like to me I always want to know more especially with like I'm like this with serial killer documentaries and even interviews with serial killers I want to know more I need to know more so in all honesty that's probably more of a personal thing rather than like I go at her as the writer but that was really the only thing in the book was the ending just bugged me a little bit that I just needed to know more about this character because this character was so creepy and like it fits in with the character that they are creepy and just like how I'm gonna fuck with you and not tell you what you want to know it totally does. Just on personal taste, I wanted to know more. And maybe maybe some people love that. Maybe, I don't know. And, you know, and I'm not saying that that totally made me hate the book. It made me out, no, because I still love the book. I still enjoyed it. I would read it again because I do. I read books more than once, you know, if I like them. I have books I've read like 50 times because, you know, I just love reading. I think... It's not my favourite in the series. I mean, my favourite in the series probably still is Picture Her Dead because it was the first one I read and it's set in Edinburgh and I related a lot to one of the characters in it. But I really related to the character Claire in this book on a really creepy level. And, yeah, she meets her demise and I was very sad. Uh, you know, there's nothing worse than when your favourite character dies. And, but... I loved her character because she was just weird and creepy and you know kind of going into the series as a whole what I love is that no two of her books are the same they all follow really weird cases one was like a witchcraft case one was to do with abandoned cinemas one was to do with stealing babies out of people's wombs you know um we've had ones to do with ruins you know like human trafficking you know, all the books are different and they're quirky and they're cases that you're like, when you pick it up, you're like, that's weird. That is a weird crime. I want to read that. And that's something I love is that <sighs> imagination in crime novels isn't really something that you would really put together. But I do love that there is a big sense of imagination with these crimes, which are serious, but like... They're ones that you just wouldn't think of ever happening. And they're really clever. And that's why I really like her books. So, yeah. So, if I was to give this a rating out of 10, I'd probably give it... I'm going to say, like, 9.5 out of 10. Just because I wanted to know more about the killer. I can see why it was done that way. And I'm kind of hoping that maybe it'll be covered in another book. Maybe not. That could just be wishful thinking. So, yeah. I mean, I love this. I would highly recommend it to everyone if you love crime. Also, it's a badass female writer, which we need to celebrate more. You know, I was saying this to Grant, my husband, the other day. I was like, you know, there are a lot of great female crime writers out there. Some of whom have more credit than others. But I was just like, you know... I was just like, I just wish there was more support and acceptance of female writers. I feel like we still have a long way to go. And the fact that she is very well known and, you know, she runs Bloody Scotland, which is like a crime writing, like, um, convention. And she is such a lovely writer. I mean, admittedly, I'm always like the youngest person there at her, like, um, yeah, events. But like, I don't care. But it's one of those things I wish, like, I don't know, 
she's just so nice a writer like she's not one of those writers who's like I'm too good to talk to people and interact with people and that's something I love like when I first met her she recognized me from my Twitter picture and she was like oh we talk on Twitter I know who you are and I was so like oh my god I have been in love with this woman's work for years she recognizes me what you know and she's so nice and you know, and I think that also just makes the books, there's something about if the offer is nice that makes you more likely to pick up the book and read it. Like, I have heard horror stories about famous writers. I'm not going to name names because I have friends who are published writers and are quite well known. And it puts me off reading their work, knowing how they treat their fans or just like even their peers. Whereas it totally makes me think like, you know, if someone's going to be kind enough to talk to people who admire their work, then yeah, they are totally worth supporting. And that's just me being soppy and sentimental here. But like, yeah. So, highly recommend Sins of the Dead. I really recommend if you have the chance to go back and read her other books. I think they're also available on Kindle. I saw her posting now. I don't know if they're on offer anymore, but they were on offer the other day on Kindle, but they, that could have been like a one day thing. But I'm pretty sure they are all available online. If you prefer reading them online, I prefer having books. I think it's just available in hardback at the moment. Um, which suits me fine, but I know hardback's not. Like, I'm currently reading a paperback and I don't know what to do with it because the last three books I've read were hardback. But it retails for $14.99, but like, usually if you go to like Waterstones or stuff, you can get money off. Um... But honestly, if you like crime, if you're from Scotland, or even if you just want to know more about like Scotland, her books are great. And they really do, and they're really captivating, and she doesn't hold back. You know, if you like books that swear and have sex and are just real, then you'll love her work. Then you'll love it. If you don't like that kind of stuff, then probably not. But they're not overly gory and terrifying that they're unreadable for crime there is a strong story and there is strong characters and I really love that because sometimes that can get lost in crime books but she has everything there are strong strong storylines really intriguing unique crimes and really really strong characters who you go on the adventure with and I like that it's not just one character you're following the whole time. You're following a series of characters and their emotions and their lives. And that's something I enjoy about these books. And I don't really read serialised books. You know, and this one, you can pick this one up and you would be fine. As I said before. But if you'd like to, if you want to start at the beginning, I would honestly recommend that because her books are amazing. But this one is fantastic. As I said, I give it nine and a half out of ten. I really, really loved it. And this was probably a very rambly, not great book review, probably, because it's more just me rambling about my feelings about I don't know. I'm I'm kind of just trying not to give too much away in case someone is watching this who hasn't read it and just wants to know my opinion. Because sometimes people do that before reading a book, so I'm trying not to give anything away, and this is half an hour long. And I know I've given away quite a few, like, big plot points, but honestly, that they're not even, like, the main one. Like, well, they are big ones, but blah. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to finish now because I am just rambling. So, again, that was Sins of the Dead by Lynn Anderson. Absolutely loved this book. Highly recommend it. It retails for $14.99, but you can get it on Kindle. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if this one's on Kindle, but her other ones are. And check her out on Twitter as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you've read the book, what you thought of it. And what you think about doing, like, any ideas for my indie comic kind of review series. Anyway, I'd love to hear from you all. Anyway, I hope you're doing well and take care. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!